Hey everyone out there in Banjo land, Mike Henning here. I've got another little banjo mini lesson for you. This time we're going to work on improving your knowledge of the fretboard. So this is a big topic and it's easy to get overwhelmed. You know, you look down at your banjo, you've got 22 frets, sometimes 24, you've got five strings. It's a lot to memorize. So we're going to take this really slow. We're going to work on finding five simple notes and then seeing how many spots on the banjo we can find those same five notes. Because on the banjo, just the nature of the way it's tuned, you have a lot more repeating phrases than you might on a mandolin or guitar where there's only two or three maybe spots to play the same five notes. On a banjo, there might be five or six spots depending on how advanced you're getting. So this is what we're gonna work on for this lesson, finding five simple notes and seeing how many spots we can find those same five notes on the banjo. This is gonna improve your knowledge of the fretboard, get you thinking about transferring between different strings, thinking about decisions of where you wanna play something on the banjo. Now that you know multiple spots to play the same idea, that gets into decision making now of, okay, do I wanna play it down here? Do I wanna play it up here? And that's gonna improve your knowledge of the fretboard. I'm gonna break it all down. All right, here we go. Here's improving your knowledge of the fretboard. All right, let's start talking about a little exercise to improve our knowledge of the fretboard. And there's a lot of ways to do this. And this is a big topic, so we're gonna get into it really slowly. Because I think if you just initially try to memorize the entire fretboard, it's pretty overwhelming, so. Um, I know I felt that way. So I think taking it in chunks, digesting it in small pieces is a better way to learn the fretboard. So what we're gonna do for this example is we're gonna take five notes and we're gonna see how many spots we can find those same five notes on the banjo. So it's really important on banjo just because of the nature of the tuning that we really understand the fretboard. So I'm gonna give you five notes to start with and eventually you can add other notes or or make up your own notes to, to do this exercise, but these are five notes that are gonna appear on the fretboard in multiple spots. So we're gonna start up on our D string, our first string. That's gonna be our first note and we're gonna do the first five notes of a major scale. So we've got open D string, second fret on the D string, fourth fret on the D string, fifth fret on the D string, and seventh fret on the D string. And then we're gonna go back down. And for this exercise, I wouldn't worry about what you're doing with your left hand or your right hand. You could single string, T, thumb index, thumb index over and over again. You could play your middle finger over and over again. You could play them all with your thumb. Again, what we're working on for this exercise is our fretboard knowledge. We're not necessarily working on what fingers to use. We can do that later. We just want to get our notes down, okay? So we're gonna, those are the five notes. So one thing you can think about is our pattern for a major scale, which is whole step. So we got a whole step, two frets, whole step, half step, whole step. So that's our pattern. And like I said, eventually you can find the rest of the notes in the scale, but we're just gonna start with those five notes. And we're starting with the easiest way of finding them all on one string. So those are our five notes, and we're gonna keep them in the same octave. So if you played them in a lower octave, there would even be more, more ways to play those same notes. So for this exercise, we're gonna keep all the notes in the same octave, so the exact same notes. So we're not even gonna practice finding those notes in a different octave, which would be another great exercise to do. But for this example, again, remember, we're just finding those exact same notes. So the first way to do it is to find them all on one string, okay? So now let's move down to the second string and do that same thing. So we're gonna start on the third fret, up to the fifth fret, seven, eight, and 10. Remember, we're following that same major scale pattern, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. So again, don't, don't worry about what you're doing with your left hand or right hand, just find the notes. And play it all with your thumb of your right hand if you want. Okay, so those are, that's on the second string, same five notes, exact same pitches. Let's move down to the third string. We're gonna start off at the seventh fret, and then the ninth fret, whole step, 
Whole step, 11. Half step, 12. Whole step, 14. Lastly, on the fourth string, 12th fret, 14, 16, 17, and 19. So th that would be on the four strings, and on the fifth string, we can only grab two of those notes. Again, if we if we wanted to to change the octave, we could play we could play all of them. But if we want to stay in the same octave, we can only grab two of the notes: the 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 fifth fret, the G, and the A note. We don't have any notes lower than this fifth fret. That's our 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 lowest note on the fifth string. So again, we can only grab two of the notes. Okay. So now we've got a way to play those five notes, those exact same five notes on any of the strings we want. Let's do that again. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go down. Again, on the fifth string, we have two notes only. Okay, so just figuring out where those same five notes occur on each string is very important because now what can we do? We can start combining the strings to, to move this way across the strings or this way. We really have any direction we can go now depending on where we want to go. So maybe I start it on the second string and now I switch to the first string. So I can find the notes that way. Maybe I start down here. Now I'm changing across three strings. Maybe I do it this way, melodically, so now I switch strings really quickly. So now I'm going across all the strings. Or I do it up here, single string. I'm doing is combining the versions and that's why it's so important to learn it on each string first because now I'm just playing the first two notes on, in that example I'm playing the first two notes on the third string now I'm playing notes three and four on the second string I can go up and grab that that fifth note right here or right here again I just did it or up here Any combination I want, I can change. I, again, I can start on the fourth string and move to the third string. I could stay on the third string and move to the second string. I can really, fr it frees me up to do whatever I want because now I know how to play those same five notes on any string. Just find all the spots you can play those notes. The more ways you can do it, the better. So again, or play it this way. If you want it to be smoother sounding, change strings more often. So that'd be like melodic. Now I've got all the notes on a different string, right? So that's going to be very smooth, very roll sounding. The more notes I put on the same string, the more kind of staccato or almost mimics a flat pick of a guitar. So if you want that sound, you know, put more of the notes on the same string. The other thing you can do with this exercise once you get it down is you don't have to go just straight up and straight down the five notes. So you can mix them up. And come up with your own little pattern. Because again, your scale notes are just your potential notes. So those are just notes that you have you can mix up in any order you want once you get them down. Don't even take it to a different octave yet. That'd be a whole different exercise. Keep the notes the exact same. Just find how many strings you can find those notes on. Just 
mixing them up in whatever order I want. And then I'm just ending on my D note to kind of make it sound like a complete lick. So you really couldn't over practice this exercise. This is a really good exercise in, in developing your knowledge of the fretboard. You really want to be able to play those notes wherever you are on the fretboard and you can always get yourself out of a tough situation. If you're up here, now I know where to grab those notes to get back down or vice versa if I'm down here, now I know how to get those notes to start moving up the neck. And there's so many things you could do to expand upon this exercise. Eventually you could take five different notes. <laughs> Do it in the key of G, for example, and do the same exercise and see if you can find those five notes in as many places as you can. The other thing you could do is expand out to the rest of the scale. So play the rest of the notes in the D scale and then find those same notes. You know, do the same thing, find them on all the strings. and then do the same exercise. You know, so first thing first is find all the notes on one string, that's the easiest. It's the most kind of linear. You're just moving straight up and straight down on one string, but it's probably the least practical, right? Not very often going to play all the notes on the same string. Just because of the nature of the banjo, you're gonna be shifting a lot if you're playing them all on one string. But it is important to know how to play them on one string because that's gonna give you the, the ability connect all the strings together and now create your own scales and patterns. So I would just think of these as a combination of memorization and ear training. You also want to hear how the notes sound so you can start picking up those notes and you don't want to just be reliant completely on memorizing because it's a lot to memorize. So trust your ear and that's why I'm starting with a very recognizable major scale. Eventually you could add more complex notes and mix it up even further, but start with these five notes, figure out how many different ways you can play on the banjo, try it with melodic, try it with single string, try just picking one note at a time. The right hand and left hand stuff on this exercise at first isn't what is important. The, the important thing is figuring out how, where you can find all those notes and make the connection between transferring to the next string and being able to continue the melodic idea that you're playing. All right, hopefully that helps you out. All right, good luck.